Hi there, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield from Transport Evolved, and today I'm going to be talking to you about supercharging, Tesla's own proprietary DC quick charging technology, as found on its Model S, Model X, and upcoming Model 3. The fastest electric car charging technology available to the public today, it's arguably one of the brand's unique selling points. Technically capable of providing up to 145 kilowatts of power, although usually maxed out at 120 kilowatts in most cases, Tesla's superchargers can replenish a compatible Tesla battery pack at a rate of just over 330 miles of range per hour about 540 kilometers per hour, far faster than the 50 kilowatts currently used by both Chademo and CCS quick charge standards. Until recently, Tesla gave customers with supercharger-enabled cars unrestricted access to its supercharger network, regardless of how many miles they drove or how old their car was. But earlier this year, that policy switched to only providing 400 kilowatt hours of free power per year for those buying brand new Teslas, with Tesla then offering customers the chance to buy additional supercharger credits as and when needed. That policy change caused quite a ruckus among Tesla fans, but over the weekend another supercharger story surfaced which suggests that some owners, especially those who use the supercharger network a lot, were experiencing maximum charge rates during their car's supercharger sessions that were far lower than the supercharger's theoretical maximum power. Why? Well, in recent months, Tesla has been working hard to discourage supercharger use for all but long distance travel, promoting destination charging and home-based charging as a more sensible solution for the vast majority of Tesla customers. But in this case, the reduction in supercharger speed for Tesla cars with a high supercharger use isn't a punishment. It's a way to protect the batteries and thus ensure the car continues to operate properly for many more years to come. As our friends over at Electrek were told by Tesla earlier today, every Tesla features an advanced battery management system that does everything it can to ensure the individual cells in each battery pack are kept in the best possible health to ensure high performance and longevity over many years of use. Just like any other electric car battery pack, the lithium-ion cells found in a Tesla electric car slowly and inexorably age with time. This aging process not only affects how much electricity each cell can store, but also the amount of instantaneous power an electric car can safely provide or receive. And while modern lithium-ion electric car battery packs, especially ones with adequate thermal management like Tesla's, are designed to safely charge and discharge at high rates with minimal effect on the battery pack, continued extreme charging and discharging does induce premature battery pack aging. Do it in a really warm weather and the effects are even more pronounced. It's worth noting here that I'm talking about a use case outside normal electric vehicle ownership. Most plug-in car drivers charge at home overnight, visiting a rapid charging station like a CCS, Chademo or Tesla supercharger when making the occasional long distance trip, which is all well within the limits that most manufacturers plan for. It's only when cars go through multiple rapid charging cycles day after day after day that the risk of damaging the battery pack increases if charge currents are kept high. Tesla, just like every other automaker, is well aware of this limitation. Rather than allow supercharger use cars to continue to charge at ultra high rates, thus leading to premature battery death, Tesla's engineers opted to add a subroutine which gradually limits the maximum supercharger power a car can use. This routine does gradually lengthen the time it takes to charge at a supercharger station, maybe five minutes or so overall, but it does so in order to protect the battery pack and ensure continued battery pack health for high supercharger cars. I should note here too that I've seen the same thing happen with a Nissan Leaf. Owning an early 2011 Nissan Leaf myself for four years in the UK, I can attest to the fact that as the car aged, it had 82,000 miles on it when I sold it, it charged more slowly as the number of miles increased compared to when it was new. I suspect that Nissan applied a similar algorithm to Tesla in order to protect its battery packs, but I can't say this for sure. But I digress. In the case of this particular Tesla Model S owner, who noticed that their car was supercharging more slowly than it once was and took their car to be checked out at the local Tesla service center, their car had accumulated more than 6.6 .6 megawatt hours of DC quick charging sessions at Chademo DC quick chargers, plus more than 50 supercharger sessions on top of this. 
like my 2011 Nissan Leaf, which used a Tademo DC quick charging station far more frequently than the average Leaf, this Model S and its usage patterns are certainly atypical for the average EV user. Indeed, it puts this particular Tesla Model S into the 1% of cars that Tesla said are currently restricted in their supercharging maximum power due to age, mileage, or number of supercharger sessions. Most, as I've said before, shouldn't ever reach that point, at least, not for many, many years. But as the number of Teslas in the wild increases, the number of people who find themselves in that position will increase as well. And while most Tesla customers understand why the supercharger limit exists, some are vocally upset about it, especially in the light of Tesla's recent patent applications pertaining to liquid cooling while charging, as well as high, high power supercharging that could even double or triple today's supercharger speed. To that, however, I'll say this. As battery charging speed increases, so too does battery chemistry to make ever higher rates possible. Right now, we're using a lithium ion cell chemistry, which has a limit on the number of times it can be charged at high voltage and high power before premature aging kicks in. In five or 10 years time, we'll likely look back and laugh at how slow today's modern charging technology is by comparison. To conclude, it's only an extra five minutes or so per charge, so ask yourself this. Would you rather have a car that takes a little longer to charge, or one with a battery pack that's degraded to the point where you can't drive it very far anymore? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this, why not contribute to our running costs via Patreon? I've left a link below and at the end of this video. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back tomorrow. And until then, keep evolving.